Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Clinical psychologist Lucy Papillon blends personal narratives with useful tools to explore rape culture and empower women and those suffering from abuse to participate in their own journey toward awareness and recovery in her book, How Dare You? Insidious Ways Women Are Mistreated, The Me Too Movement, A Memoir, Experience of Others, and How to Hear. According to Dr. Pampion, the Me Too movement has revealed an insidious epidemic that plagues society. With sexual assault, it can take years for victims to find their voice and speak up. Her book aims to ease the isolation for those too traumatized to speak about their experiences. She includes her own experiences as well as case studies from 18 years of clinical practice. Lucy Pampion, Ph.D., a renowned clinical psychologist in who's who of professional people, Voted Best Psychologist in Hermosa Beach, California in 2019, plus Best Psychologist in Beverly Hills in 2019. She's a media and private practicing psychologist in both cities. She served on the faculty at UCI Medical School, authored three books, appeared as an expert in numerous television, radio, and well-respected publications. Dr. Papillon currently lectures throughout the United States and the world And she's the author of How Dare You, Insidious Ways Women Are Mistreated, The Me Too Movement, A Memoir, Experiences of Others, and How to Heal. And she's our guest on This Week in America. Doctor, welcome to the program. It is a pleasure to have you with us on the program today. Oh, and thank you so much for having me, Rick. This is great. This is such an important book. And I want to talk about the, the motivation. Why did you decide to write this book? And you come from a different perspective, which we'll talk about during the course of the interview. What inspired you to write the book? Rick, there were so many people coming forward in my practice that hadn't been talking about it. And I'd been seeing them for a long time, but they never mentioned that they'd been abused. Then when all of the media came out with people talking about it, uh, they started saying, oh my gosh, I hate to say this because it's been a secret for so long and, and it's so painful, but let me tell you. So I began to hear many, many more stories about people who'd been sexually abused or just abused in their um workplace abused in um by their own husbands etc so it just became really pertinent to me that i bring forth their stories my stories and how we can all heal from them what makes this book unique in the book we're talking about is how dare you insidious ways women are mistreated the me too movement a memoir experiences of others and how to deal uh, and how to deal let's talk about the you aspect of this because this is different because you were able to reflect uh, I, I mentioned the word memoir in there part of this is your story how difficult was that for you to do Rick that's a thank you for that question that was a very difficult time But you know, I felt like uh, that I had had many, many experiences of abuse by men for so long and I'd never ever talked about it. And here I am a clinical psychologist revealing my own story and that's very unusual. And I, you know, chose to be vulnerable and I chose to bring it up because I know that that helps other people. If I say I've been traumatized or I've been abused, people say, well, gosh, she's had experience. I'll go talk to her. And I want people to come forth wherever they are and find a professional to talk to because it's so important to talk about it. We can't heal if we don't talk about it. it. It helped me heal to just write about it and for a long time, I had really blocked how many people had abused me, had sexually abused me. Uh, not, I mean, every one of them hadn't done the traditional sexual abuse, but they right. had in, animated it by the way they hung, I mean, the way they uh, hugged me, the way they pushed their pelvis, like, you know, that kind of thing had happened over and over. And guess what? Because my father was a minister, I had so many ministers around, and they were the ones that were abusing me. That's just an amazing story that uh, Dr. Papillon shares in her book, How Dare You? 
Insidious Ways Women Are Mistreated, the Me Too Movement, a memoir, experience of others, and, and how to deal. Her website is Dr. Pampion, and that's P-A-P-I-L-L-O-N.com. Book available, of course, wherever books are sold. And you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link on directly to information on uh, Dr. Pampion and, and her book as well. So it's interesting when you are, are seeing people as, as a psychologist, uh, you can relate to them, can you? This is just not something from a textbook that you're saying to the patient. You've been there. Oh, I, yes, I definitely have been there. But some of the stories that I put in my book and that have been told by me by patients are so in. I, I hate to use the word because I use it in my title, but they were so insidious. It was really hard for me to listen to it without going, oh, my gosh, you know, you know, and I, I did do that in some ways by, by just the look on my face when, uh, especially the first one I talk about when she talked about her husband coming in and she had cancer and she was in a treatment for chemo and he just pulled her off the bed and started raping her. And it was rape. I don't care if he was her husband. He raped her. Yes. And she kept saying, no, no. And he kept saying, I have to. So I'm just like, this is a terrible, terrible story. And I must tell it. And you do so well in the book, How Dare You? The book's available on Dr. Papian's website, available at Amazon. You can link on by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Talk about how the how you, your book fits in with, with the Me Too movement. As you mentioned, this sort of opened the, the gates, and it was okay for people to come forward and to talk about the, the issues, what they had to put up with. Uh, and you bring a unique perspective as well. Talk about how this fits in with the, the Me Too movement and, and really helping people giving them an opportunity to, to, to open up and share their stories. Uh, there's an actress named Alyssa Milano. Yes. And one day she decided she was just lying in bed playing with her phone, and she decided she would tweet, anybody who's been sexually abused, just hashtag me too back. The next morning she woke up and there were 22,000 responses. She started crying and she thought, oh my gosh, this is huge. This is so much bigger. I mean, she wasn't even thinking that very many people would respond. And when they did, absolutely that's when the Me Too movement started. And, you know, when I started reading and doing research for this book, I mean, secretaries, um, senators, representatives, people from all the areas of life, all the areas were coming forth and just speaking about it. If you remember Time Magazine last year on their cover oh, yes. had, had so many women, just it was covered with women and it was the silence breakers. That's such a perfect title for what they did. They spoke up, which is what you must do if you've been sexually abused as a woman. It's just too important not to. You must. You must. In writing this book, you are a psychologist. You are seeing people who are coming to you for help. Does this add to the credibility, the fact that okay, my psychologist, it, it, some may look at it as being vulnerable. Others may look at it as She's been through this. Who better to go to than someone who fully understands this? Explain how this played out in your decision to go forward and to tell your story. You know, uh, I was surprised at how many people were willing to come to a psychologist who was so vulnerable. And uh, I, they thanked me for it. And I thanked them, of course, for coming. But I also had a patient one time, and she was reading my website, and she saw that I had been traumatized before in other ways, too. And she said, I definitely want to come to somebody who not only had been traumatized, but would talk about it and would say it on a website that they have. So it, it's important to speak up, I think. You know, used to all the early psychologists would say, you're behind a silent screen and you don't say anything about yourself. Well, 
at times it's very important that you say something about yourself. And this was one of those times. The book is How Dare You? Insidious Ways Women Are Mistreated, The Me Too Movement, A Memoir, Experience of Others, and How to Deal. Uh, Dr. Lucy Pampion is our guest on the program today. Her website is drpampion.com. Book's available at Amazon. We'll give you all that information as we as we go through the program. What was your re- the reaction that you got from friends and family members, family members in particular, when you shared your story? What was the, what was their reaction? You know, Rick, I have to tell you the honest truth. I've never shared this book with them, and I don't want to, because they, um, first of all, I'm not close to uh, a lot of my family. Uh, You know, my father and mother are deceased. Um, But, um, you know, my sister, I could tell every time I just brought up the book in general, she was extremely uncomfortable. So I decided, no, I don't ever want her to read this. And she's fine with that, I'm sure. I haven't said that ex- those exact words. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but my brothers, you know, they, if they saw it, they would just, you know, see if they could come and, you know, <laughs> strangle me or something. <laughs> 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 Not literally, but boy, you know, just in, in uh, you know, <laughs> symbolically, that's what I want to say. Yes, yes. <laughs> when you decided to share these stories and I get the impression that this is something that you've carried with you for a number of years and you felt now I can do I can really do good by by talking about it what was it like when you went through this process was there that that feeling that for once you have your voice you're now able to to address this Rick that's a great question you know what the truth is I was sitting in a conference that I actually presented to this year about my book, but two or three years, well, probably about two years ago, a woman was sitting next to me and I, and she turned to me and she said, well, have you had any abuse? And I looked at her and I said, well, let me just tell you something that happened. I don't think it was, but let me tell you. And I told her this experience that I had gone to a, uh, I had made all A's. I've never made a B in my life, summa cum laude, valedictorian, all of those things. And every, you know, graduate school, bachelor's, everything. And um, so I, you know, I just felt that I would get in this graduate school for my PhD. So I I made the letter, wrote the letter, sent it to, to the school, and they rejected me. And I said, what? And I was so upset. I, I was walking away crying, and this um, colleague of mine came up, and she and he said, he, he yes, <laughs> yes. said to me, because I think a lot more men would say this than women, he said, go back in there and confront him. And I said, oh, I can't do that. And he said, go in there and say, why wasn't I accepted? Uh, so I turned around, I went back, and I knocked on the door of the director and I said and I, he opened it and I said could I please talk to you I want just I just want to know how come you said no to me when I had all the credentials I had and he said well we know you got everything on a silver platter given your attractiveness your sexuality or this or that so we decided we weren't going to reinforce that. Oh, jeez. So we're not going to let you in, wow. the committee and I, all men. Yes. And I started bawling. I couldn't help it. I just said, I have worked for every single thing I've gotten. And he he just looked dumbfounded and, 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 and so embarrassed. And of course, he let me in and we became friends. But that was a really tough one. With us on the program, Dr. Lucy Pampion. Her book is How Dare You? Insidious Ways Women Are Mistreated, The Me Too Movement, A Memoir, Experience of Others, and How to Deal. The book available at her website. Uh, uh, the book's available also at, uh, of course, at, uh, at Amazon. We'll have a link on our website so you can, uh, you can find all of that. Uh, let's talk about some of the examples. I have the impression it was not difficult coming, sadly, coming up with examples 
of different type of uh, types of abuses was it? Oh, it wasn't at all. I really had to use because I had so many uh, experiences that I could have shared from other people. Uh, I remember one other one. She uh, pretty early on was sexually abused in her childhood. And so she, for some reason, became very addicted to porn at the, about the age 13, which is really early for people to get that addicted to porn. But she would watch it all the time and until she her grades went down, everything went down. And finally, she went to a recovery place and she stayed for two months and she came out and she said, Dr. Papillon, every single day, I have to fight going toward that computer and looking at porn. Even back in college, I just cannot seem to get completely away from porn because I don't know, for some reason it fed what had happened to me and I never told anybody that that it happened to me. So uh, it just became something that I just, I just kept looking at and looking at and looking at. I didn't tell anybody, but except for now, for you. And I just thought that was powerful that she was willing to tell me about it finally. The book is, and I think I said this incorrectly here, How Dare You, Insidious Ways Women Are Mistreated, subtitled The Me Too Movement, A Memoir, Experience of Others, and How to Heal. The book is available at uh, Dr. Papillon's website, uh, available at, at Amazon as well. You talked about one horrendous example with the uh, with, with the cancer story in there. Are there others that come to mind? The stories that that really hit home. That okay, this this has to end. We really need to be aware of it, and we need to end this. Well, you know what? The thing that I want to bring up is about the Epstein Jeffrey Epstein, because it's so recent, and. After he committed suicide, even more women came forward and said, when I was 13, you know, he raped me. Or when I was this age, you know, he raped me. Or he made me get other children, 13, 14. And, and I just I just want to bring that up because it's a Me Too movement example. All these women are coming forward and say, I don't have a chance now to confront him because he killed himself. But... I still want to talk about it now. And they had never talked about it. So I just want to bring that up as a perfect example of what's happening today. Not last year, not two years ago. People are coming forward today saying, I was abused by this man and now he's killed himself. That's a very important point. This is not something that that the Me Too movement that happened a year or so ago. It's ongoing, isn't it? It's something that uh, many people face on a a daily basis and have to make some very tough decisions. You know, that's so true, Rick. People that haven't even come forward yet that are thinking about it are people in my, uh, when I presented to a huge group of women, they came up to me and they said, you know, I've never told anybody, and I don't think I still can. It's really, really, really hard, Dr. Papillon, to reveal that. It's so painful myself, but to tell other people, i got to find a good professional. And I agree with them that the first person they tell has to be somebody who can listen, who won't judge, who won't say, oh, you're probably making some of that up. Oh, that would be that would just be re- re-injuring them. Well, and that happens. And this, uh, once someone is faced with this, I'm sure, and you deal with this on an ongoing basis, their fear is it's my word against their word. They will deny, and suddenly it's my credibility against this person. In many cases, that person has power over them, and is perceived to have more credibility. How do you deal with that in taking a stand? Because I'm sure you've met many people that have not come forward because in most cases it's easy for someone to deny because there really isn't a a lot of physical evidence. Yes, absolutely. In fact, so many of them are scared that they're going to lose their job if they have one. They're scared that the power they have, that the husband has over them for many, many reasons, that's going to be something that they're going to have to handle or 
the husband's going to deny it and he won't be sent to jail and she'll be in shame. You know, it's just very difficult to not feel shame about this internally before you ever speak about it. And then if somebody shames you because you don't tell the right person, that just doubles the pain. We are now at the point with the Me Too movement that some of the names that were mentioned early on and spawned this movement are, are coming back, are looking for a second chance. We have Mark Halpern, the, the author who's writing a book, and uh, uh, some people are saying, no, you haven't earned a second chance yet. How do we si- decide as a society when someone has asked for forgiveness and we should grant that? How do we deal as these people who were perpetrators in the beginning now suddenly are back in the limelight? How do we how do we justify that? Do we do we forgive and move forward? Ooh, Rick, that's a really important question. Well, yes, because you struggle uh, with that because you think yeah. maybe they really saw what they did and understand how mm-hmm. horrific uh, that was. And others are just back because I don't have a steady income anymore. I need to write another book. Yeah. You know, it's it's I've I've thought about writing a book of two men about their yes experience. But I'm not going to, of course, do that because probably I don't I don't even know. I'm still thinking about it. But the, the truth is, it takes a huge amount of um, strength and, and giving up of, of ego to to do that, to still be willing to write about it, say I'm sorry about it and for people to believe them. It really is. Yes. It just, it's a question that we're now struggling with, and, and we see these people wanting to come back, comedians going into comedy clubs and getting booed, and others saying, uh, he's paid the price for the last couple of years. It, 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 it's interesting what that struggle is. We've got a couple minutes left in the program. What are some, some ways that you would advise someone who's gone through sexual assault to heal? Because I'm sure the first few months of this are... are They're going through their mind, what happened? Did they contribute in any way? What do they do now? They're dealing with this emotional scar. How do you deal with this in the beginning? Just a couple of tips. You've got many in the book, but just uh, as we're closing out the program, someone who's listening, who's been through this, and feel maybe it's time now to confront this. Yes, it is. And I think that the very first thing to do is to speak about it to a professional. That is the first step of healing, is to be willing to come forth and and find a, ther- a really good therapist, good professional. Secondly, you have to speak your anger about it. You know, people just hold that anger in and say, oh, who cares anyway? Who's going to listen? Who's going to just allow me to rage and speak out and do all the things I need to do to heal? But I tell patients, Go out and throw rocks at a tree. Go out and go to the ocean and throw something at the ocean or break pencils or something. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, that's the very first step and the most important step. And then secondly, you have to tell your story over and over until it does not affect you so strongly. And that's with your therapist. You talk about it. That's what I do with people that are traumatized are in any way uh, injured. They have to talk about it. I have a woman who was, well, it's not even a Me Too movement thing, but she she was blown up at, in Afghanistan and she was a, a, a physician. And she's coming to me and I'm saying, I need, to te- I need you to tell me what it was like, what it was like to have to redo your face. What was it like to have this and that? So. They all have to talk about it. They can't keep it in. That's the most dangerous thing and most painful thing to bring up, but the most dangerous thing to keep in. Well, the book is full of useful tools to explore the rape culture, empower women. The book is How Dare You, Insidious Ways Women Are Mistreated, subtitled The Me Too Movement, a memoir, Experiences of Others and How to Heal, the book by Dr. Lucy Papillon, that's P-A-P-I-L-L-O-N. Her website is drpapillon.com. Book available at Amazon, the usual places. Link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. 
Doctor, it's been a pleasure, a very important conversation today. Thank you so much for taking time to, to be with us on the program. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate it very much. It has been our pleasure. Once again, the book is available at Dr. Papillon's website, Dr. Papillon, P-A-P-I-L-L-O-N.com. It's available at Amazon. Link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program right after these messages. <laughs> 